York. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Paul Clemente. of the ocean. I don't know why I start with that one. That's terrible. Um, my name is Paul Clemente. Um, I need to say weird shit or I will die. I am completely convinced I need to or I will die like a shark that stops swimming. I will die. Um, just recently I was, I was at Eaton Park here in lovely Erie, Pennsylvania and I'm at the salad bar and this, is a, this joke's a year old where there were salad bars. And there was a lady next to me, and she was shoulder to shoulder, and she was shoveling carrots and having the best time of her life. And out of my periphery, I thought she wanted to tell me something. I went down, and she turned around because I startled her, and my ear went in her mouth. And she goes, what the fuck are you doing? And I panicked, and I said, I'm sorry, I thought you wanted to tell me a secret. And she didn't. <laughs> when is the worst time to be told you have a banana in your pocket? When you're shoplifting bananas. <laughs> I think horses are nature's most beautiful chairs. Oh man, I was at Starbucks with my daughter and they write your name on the cup and they asked me, what's your name? And I said, dad. And my daughter's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, I got tests. <laughs> and she gets her drink and we sit down together and then the guy calls out, he goes, okay, dad? Dad? Has anyone seen dad? <laughs> It wasn't that a good day. Uh, I wish I was as dedicated to anything than Subway was to keeping that extra meatball off my sub. They will bring it back and throw it away before you get an extra meatball. That's not a joke. I'm just really upset about it. And also, a black forest is a place for witches, not a place for succulent ham. <laughs> Who called it that? So a little about me. Um, I just found out I'm allergic to cats, so I can't eat cats anymore. <laughs> for the rest of the year, at least. It's been really upset. Um, my daughter, who I went to Starbucks with from the previous joke from the show that you were just at, um, came out to me this year as, as gay. And just like any kid, she's 15, she texted me, she goes, Dad, I'm gay, fire emoji, fire emoji, shrugging lady emoji. <laughs> and I'm like, that's cool, I'm glad you can be who you are. And I'm like, well, I'm trying, I'm trying to think, like, you know, how, how that would have happened, and, and I'm happy that, like, she found her way. But I'm like, well, me, I'm like, how, like, I'm maybe, like, 11% gay. Like, I point at the dicks at Game of Thrones all the time, and I'm, like, showing my wife. I'm, like, check that out. But I'm not, I don't have, like, a business interest in dicks. But I'm just, ha I'm, like, I'm happy people do. But I just don't have a business interest. So if my daughter's, like, 51% gay, and I'm, like, 11% gay, that means my ex-wife is, like, 40% gay, which would make sense to why she married someone with these magical tits. <laughs> I believe um, the presidential race should be determined by three things. Hot dog eating contest, three point contest, and a best of seven on Rainbow Road in Mario Kart. <laughs> Whoever wins, I, you guys with me on that? <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Are you thinking like, wow, that's a good idea. <laughs> oh man. I am, I'm old enough to own a flashlight, but I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> um, I'm old enough, if I was on your favorite sports team, you would be really upset. 
<laughs> but I'm that old, and I've never, I don't know where umbrellas come from. Who's buying umbrellas? I've just always had, my whole life, my whole life I've just had an umbrella. Go to your car after the show, you'll, you'll have an umbrella in your car. And I goddamn dare you tell me where you got that thing from. There is a finite amount of umbrellas across the whole world, and if you lose one or break one, a new one is born or bought. <laughs> and I always get that person after the show, like, you know, you can just buy them at Walmart. And I'm like, well, thanks for my next umbrella, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> my notes are too far down. I'm, I'm really old, and uh, I can't see that far. I overestimated how great I can see. So, um, my family's weird. Like, I never had a grandma, but I still get 20 bucks a month in my birthday cards from a woman that used to beat the shit out of my dad. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> my mom, six minutes into Thanksgiving, said this actual sentence to my entire family. You know what the worst thing about 9-11 was? And... The answer wasn't 9-11. <laughs> That's who she is. She goes, when 9-11 happened, there was so much traffic, your father was late picking me up from the foot doctor. And that's not even a joke. That is the truth. She said those <laughs> words. And this is the same lady that, like, when you buy someone a birthday card, I don't know, people don't do that anymore. That's, again, that's how old I am. We would buy someone a birthday card in the house, and it would be a top secret affair. She would, you would be walking by, just happy you just got done playing Nintendo, and she would grab you into the room, and she would be like, I'm going to show you something. <laughs> She'd open up her underwear drawer, and you're like, I'm six, and I know this is bad. <laughs> and she'd pull out, still in the bag, a birthday card, and she goes, will you sign this for your father? And I'd sign it, and she'd go, don't you fucking tell him. <laughs> it was like she was sneaking bomb schematics over enemy lines. <laughs> she was so serious about cards. My dad, on the other hand, he's just as crazy. He used to wash his brown paper bags from lunch every single day just to save money. He would come home and he would wash it and put it on the dryer rack to use for the lunch the next day to save money. And that was fucking crazy, but was even crazier, my mom used to say, well, that's how you get salmonella which I believed that wet paper bags gave you salmonella. For two marriages, I thought wet paper bags gave you salmonella, which means my first wife was either stupid enough to believe that or dumb enough to marry a guy that believed that, and I am not dealing with that at all. Uh, they wouldn't even let me get hype about like hide-and-seek in different games. I'm like, man, I won hide-and-seek, and he's like, well, you're not as good as your brother Derek. And I say, who? <laughs> oh man and they used to lie to me all the time like when we were outside having fun we'd hear the ice cream truck and get really super hype and we'd be like oh my god the ice cream truck's coming and if we were good sometimes we'd get ice cream but if we were bad he'd be like hold on settle down let me hear this I'm sorry guys that's just the ambulance playing music for sick kids no ice cream today <laughs> Like, I, I do little lies to my kids, like little tiny little lies. Like, I used to tell them that the smoke detectors were cameras in the house. And then I came playing, those smoke detectors, they don't do anything in the house at all. I don't know if they still believe that. Like, they used to think the dog farted all the time. I was like, they're, they're all my farts. I'm just going to come clean. <laughs> they're all my farts. And then I told them they didn't have to pay the French fry tax until they're like 18. But I was taking French fries from them for a long time. They used to tell me, uh, if I didn't fall asleep, the sun would not rise the next day. <laughs> the entire Earth's heat, energy, and power, source, everything, determined on whether I wanted to hear Monster at the end of the book one more time. <laughs> like I knew it was Grover. Like I knew it. <laughs> I still wanted to, to hear it. Not only would it be dark the next day, 
it would make my grandpa, who lived in Italy, late for work because the sun wouldn't be up. Like, could you imagine him outside at like 6 a.m. and it being dark and he goes, Il mi stupido nipote! <laughs> he wouldn't speak English just for my joke, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then he would steal my money, which I was like six. I didn't have any money, but the, the concept of me was just really weird that he would miss work and have to steal my money if I didn't go to sleep. <laughs> Birthday cards, tooth fairy, all these things would be gone. And then later on, I saw him at a family funeral once. I'm like, that's the guy who's been taking my money all these years. <laughs> and I was so brave, I was like six, and I was like, this guy owes me five dollars, which was a ton. I pulled up my pants and I came up to him, and just when I was about to yell at him for my money, he pulled a quarter out from behind my ear. And he gave it to me, and I'm like, shit, this is gonna take forever. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening to me. I hope you have a good rest of your night. Please give it up for the rest of your comedian.